morning, welcome to Ains and News' end of week. Again, gold and silver being present in all news. And today we're talking about seven must-see charts for gold and silver. Pictures paint a thousand words. So today we succinctly present seven charts laying out the value proposition for both gold and silver right now. Yesterday, we discussed the reasons for this latest surge in gold and silver price. One of the reasons was the debasement of fiat currencies through monetary stimulus and expansion programs by central banks and governments around the world. This next chart illustrates clearly how 17 currencies from all around the world have fallen in real monetary terms against real money, or gold. This next chart here, global synchronized debasement. Gold versus fiat currencies. Take a moment to check that out. Press pause if you want to, just so you can zoom in and have a little bit of a look. Very interesting. Gold kept in step with central bank asset or bond debt expansion up until 2013. At that point, the market started to think maybe all this monetary debasement wasn't going to lead to a broader inflation after all. Indeed, it looked like all it would do is inflate shares. So why fight the Fed? Let's roll it into shares. Check out this next chart here. Global central bank assets versus gold from around 2005 to 2020. A little bit of a disconnect there around 2013. Zooming out, and for those who like technical setups, the authors of these charts, Crescat Capital, say inflation hasn't even picked up yet. Meanwhile, the chart of the gold price adjusted for CPI since the 70s looks like one of the largest and longest cup and handle charts we have ever seen. In other words, both the nominal and the real price of gold could be poised for a breakout. Check out this chart here, gold price adjusted for inflation. Relative to that, so back to 1970 at the start and around 2020 at the end, obviously, and the classic cup and handle graphic there. And upwards she could go. The massive and record-breaking inflows to gold and silver ETFs of late have been extensively spoken about for both gold and silver. However, when measured against the same for S&P 500's ETFs, you can see the enormous potential still ahead. Check out this graph here, gold versus stock inflows. As we've discussed recently, while gold bottomed in late 2015, silver may have only just found its bottom in March this year. This next chart illustrates how what happened last time silver bottomed with Crescat noting. In 2008, the Fed printed $1.2 trillion in four months, and silver went parabolic over the next two years. It has just created 2.3 times those 2008 levels. We believe there is a timely and tremendous opportunity ahead. Check out this graph here for silver, showing things relative to when the Fed was printing money. So that 2008 level there, print a heap of money, boom, up goes silver. So the, pre the Fed has just printed $2.7 trillion in the last 77 days. Your guess is as good as mine, but it's looking pretty optimistic for silver. In the context of the S&P 500 being so completely and unprecedentedly dominated by the FAAMGs, the chart next compares where silver is compared to the normal shares as measured by the broader Russell 3000 index, which represents 3000 companies, not 500, and dominated by five, and hence a broader measure of economic health of the share market. So this chart here is showing silver to equities ratio. Again, showing a bottom around that 2000 period. And it kind of looks like we're getting a similar shape in that chart between 2000 and say 15 to 2019. Silver, of course, wears two hats. It is half monetary metal, half industrial metal. This next chart shows the full commodities index against the S&P 500. Both explains in part why silver has been late to the party and that the gold-silver ratio got so unprecedentedly high. Silver is a relatively tiny market and the sheer monetary demand has overcome the weak industrial fundamentals. However, a bottom in this commodities index is looking close. A rebound off which could add further wind to silver's sales. So check out this graph here. Commodities to S&P 500 ratio. So we had a bottom in 1972, a bottom around 2000, which was the tech bust. And it looks like we bottom out here around 20, early 2020. 
could we be in for another huge gain relative to the S&P 500? The chart tells the story. The sage is set on many metrics. This rally in both metals may relatively only just be starting. Wow, that's news for this week. Pretty tumultuous times. Hope you're all hanging in there. Remember, you can always go to ainsleybullion.com.au to read any of our news and to also purchase any of our gold and silver products. And of course, check out ainsleywealth.com.au for all of our cryptocurrency products. We'll catch you next week.